Okay. Okay. This video is going to be about momentum. Momentum, the equation for momentum, it has a P. Oh. It's a P for momentum. That's equal to mass times velocity. I'm shaking a lot. It's okay. All right. The mass will be, the units of this will be kilograms, meters, per second. And there's a conservation of momentum. If this ball, if, if this white ball is going to strike this yellow ball, and the yellow ball is sitting still, and this white ball approaches it, hits it, the yellow ball will go with the same velocity as the white ball has, and the white ball will stop. 15% or less. Alright. So there is a conservation. of momentum. Whatever momentum you start with will be the same momentum total that you end with before and after collision when you add both of them together. So here's the problem. Object 1 heading south strikes object 2 at 33 meters per second. Object 1 has a mass of 30 kilograms which is 5 kilograms heavier than object 2. What is the momentum of object 1 and object 2 after the collision? The first thing I would do is I would write something down like this. This is before collision and this is after collision. So you can write down your mass, velocity, and your momentum for each before and after. So we can see what we start with and what kind of mass we have to do to get what we end with. So object 1 heading south strikes object 2 at 33 meters per second. So object one, the velocity is 33 meters per second. It has a mass of 30 kilograms. Object two is 5 kilograms less, so it is 25 kilograms. The masses won't change, so we can fill those out. The velocity afterwards, the velocity original for object two is zero. The velocity afterwards, it'll have a velocity because it'll take object one's momentum. Object one, velocity, afterwards, we will assume it's zero. So 25 times zero is zero. And we can calculate the uh, momentum for object one. Momentum, we know, is equal to mass times velocity. The mass is 30. The velocity is 33. <coughs> So 30 times 33 is 990 kilograms, meters per second. What we're really trying to find is what is the momentum of object 1 and object 2 after collision. Well, we know that this is 990. After the collision, object 1 is going to stop completely, leaving it with zero momentum. Object 2 is going to take the momentum. So the momentum will then be 990. Does that make sense? Yep. First, if you add these both together, that equals 990. If you add these together afterwards, you still have to have 990. Your momentum is conserved. I'll do one more, and then I'll give you an answer to the next one. Really? This one, object one has a mass of 44 kilograms. Mass of 44 kilograms, and it stays still. Velocity is zero, so it is, its momentum is zero. Object two has an unknown mass, and it's moving west at 55 meters per second. Object two is moving at 55 meters per second. It has a momentum of 4950. The masses will stay the same afterwards, so we can put buildings out down here. The velocity later will be zero for object two, so the momentum will be zero. So the momentum for uh, object one after the collision must be 4950. What we're looking for is what is the velocity of object one after the collision. This is what we're looking for. 10%. Object one after collision. 
We can work this one out just by saying velocity is equal to mass times velocity. Velocity is equal to momentum over mass. So it's 4950 divided by the mass, which is 44. That should give you 112.5. Now, if we put our units in here, we should be able to cancel out units to see that this is meters per second. And we need direction. We need direction with momentum, and we need direction with velocity. For momentum, our direction is west. For velocity, and for momentum. To be direct, this direction is west. So 112.5 meters per second west. This over here should be kilogram meters per second west. Next question. This one you can do on your own. See if you uh, are able to work it out. A 90 kilogram ball strikes a smaller ball at 60 meters per second. The smaller ball strikes off east with a speed of 74 meters per second. What is the mass of the smaller ball? The first thing I did was find the momentum for object one, as shown here. Then I was able to fill in the momentum for object two and calculate the mass. If you can do these, you should be good to go.